Okay, we're here, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Um, it is super hot out here today. It is just really hot out on this island I'm on. Um, I don't know if you could tell, but wow, it, it is really hot today. It's the hottest day so far. But, and, and there's, I don't know, it just smells different. There's a stillness in the air. It's really weird. Okay, well, anyway, I'm going to move on with chapter uh, 14 today. It's a short chapter. And uh, we've already experienced quite a bit of time on the island with uh, Timothy and with Philip. And uh, Philip in the last chapter is really coming on strong. He's, his confidence is way up. He's learning more. He's working hard to, to fish and do a lot of the work that he and uh, Timothy have to do to stay alive. Um, so what I'm going to do is read chapter 14. One very hot morning in July. July! Wow! Okay, April, early April. So they've been April, May, June, July. Four months. At least four months, it sounds like they've been on this island, on this cave. Wow, that's a long time. That is a long time, if you think about it, to survive, to drink the rain water, the fresh water, to fish, to to talk, to get to know each other. One very hot morning in July, we were down on North Beach where Timothy had found a patch of calico scallops not too far offshore. It was the hottest day we'd ever had on the cave. So hot that each breath felt like fire. And for once, the trade wind was not blowing. Nothing on the cave seemed to be moving. North Beach was a very strange beach anyway. The sand on it felt coarser to my feet. Everything about it felt different. But that didn't really make sense since it was only about a mile from South Beach. Timothy explained, The North is always the bleak beach on any island. But he couldn't say why. He had just brought some calico scallops ashore when we heard the rifle shot. It came quickly to my side. He came quickly to my side saying, Dad, be trouble. Trouble? I thought it meant someone had found the cave. That wasn't trouble. Excited, I asked, who's shooting? The sea, he said. I laughed at him. The sea can't shoot a rifle. A crack like the rifle, he said, worry in his voice. It can make the shot all right, all right. It be tell us a very bad storm is coming, Philip, a tempest. I couldn't quite believe that. However, there had been distinctly a crack like a rifle or pistol shot. He said anxiously, the waves do it somewhere far out beyond the Grenadines or in that pesky bite off of Honduras, a hurricane is spawning young bars. I feel it. What we heard was a wave passing this little humbug point. I heard him sniffing the air as if he could smell the hurricane coming. Without the wind, there was a breathless silence around our cay. The sea, he told me, was smooth as green jelly, but already the water was getting cloudy. There were no birds in sight. The sky, he said, had a yellowish cast to it. Come along, we have much to do. The calico scala can wait their own self till we have the, till after the tempest. We went up, and he's saying tempest, which is like a, a great storm. We went up to our hill. Now I knew why he had chosen the highest point of land on the quay for our hut. Even so, I thought the waves might tumble over it. The first thing Timothy did was to lash or tie our water keg high on a palm trunk. Next, he took the remaining rope that we had and tied it securely around the same sturdy tree. In case the tempest reached this high, lock your arms over the rope and hang on, Philly. So now they're going to tie, well, not right now, but when the storm comes, they're going to tie themselves to a tree. I realized then why he had used our rope sparingly, why he had made my guideline down to East Beach from vines instead of rope. He wanted to save the rope. He knew they might be there long enough to face a hurricane. Every day, I learned of something new that Timothy had done so we could survive. You might not see it now, but someday you'll look back and see what your teachers 
were trying to teach you, what your coaches were trying to teach you, what your parents, people in your life are trying to teach you because they see the future a little bit differently than you do. During the afternoon, he told me this was a freak storm because most did not come until September or October, August sometimes, seldom in July. But this year, to see be angry with all the death upon it, the war. Remember, World War II is still going on, and there are a lot of ships that are being blown up and things that are going on. The storms bred, Timothy said, in the eastern North Atlantic, south of the Cape Verde Islands in the fall. But sometimes when, they're, when they were freaks and early, they bred much closer in a triangle way off the northeast tip of South America. Once in a great while in June or July, they sometimes made up not far from Providencia in San Andreas, near us. The June ones were only pesky, but the July ones were dangerous, and this is a July one. Tis be a western storm, I be guessing. They outrageous strong when they come, he said. Even Stu Cat was nervous. He was around my legs where, whenever I moved. I asked Timothy uh, what we should do to protect him. He laughed. Stu Cat be go up the palm on the lee side if him, it be getting too terrible. Don't worry about Stu Cat. Yet I could, all, I could not help worrying. The thought of losing either of them was unbearable. If something bad happened on the quay, I wanted it to happen to all of us. Nothing changed during the afternoon, although it seemed to get even hotter. Timothy spent a lot of time down at the raft, stripping off everything usable and carrying it back up the hill. He said we might never see it again, or else it might wash up the hill so that it would be impossible to launch. Timothy was not purposely trying to frighten me about the violence of the storm. He was just being honest. He had good reason to be frightened himself. In 28, I'd be on the heady red Salta, Antigua, when the hit tempest hit, the wind was outrageous, and the old schooner broke up like chips falling for the ax. I wash ashore from the sea, so wild no man believe it. No other man from the heady red lives except in me. So he was on a boat that was caught in a, in a um, hurricane. Everyone died on that boat except Timothy. Timothy survived it. I knew that wild sea from long ago was much on Timothy's mind all afternoon. We had a huge meal late in the day. Why? Why a huge meal? Okay, maybe they might not get a chance to eat again for a while. We had a huge meal late in the day, much bigger than usual, because Timothy said we might not be able to eat for several days. We had fish and coconut meat. And we each drank several cups of coconut milk. Timothy said that the fish might not return to the reef for at least a week. He noticed that they'd already gone to deep water. It's funny how nature knows what to do. After we ate, Timothy carefully cleaned his knife and put it into the tin box, which he lashed high on the same tree that held our water keg. We ready, Philip, he said. A lot of preparation. I want you to think about those preparations that they've made. Um, we will go into the next uh, chapter um, tomorrow. All right. Uh, yeah, this is a little nerve wracking. I don't like the idea of this huge storm coming this huge hurricane, um, but we will face it with Philip and Timothy tomorrow. Okay, guys? All right. We will see you. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and take care of yourselves. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.